Well, we have 15 minutes, and we have stopped a little early. It reminds me when you're flying an airplane, and they get on the sound system, and they say on the first part of the trip that uh, we're expected to get into the destination airport at such and such a time, but with prevailing winds the way they are, why we may get in six months early or seven minutes early. And now if you're on the inbound of the flight coming home, why uh, that's a very encouraging thing to be able to arrive home a little early. So we do have indeed 15 minutes. It kind of reminds me, who has uh, flown an airplane or a train to get to this conference? Raise of hands. There we go, a fair amount. Now when you flew that plane or drove in the train, particularly the planes and the terminals, there is a bank of monitors that are in there that determine generally when you come off one flight and you're going to go to another flight, there is a terminal of, of monitors there in which you're looking for your city to find out if your connecting flight is where you think it's going to be. And a, a moment of panic will happen if you find on the bank of monitors that your city or your flight is not listed or if it has the word canceled next to it. I was in an inbound flight about three months ago in the winter time, coming from the south, coming in through SeaTac, Seattle, Tacoma, and uh, I was supposed to be making a transfer plane late at night into Pasco, Washington. And we were told on the, on the ground down at the other destination that there is a chance that we are going to be late and you will not make your connecting flight. I can assure you that everybody on the plane as we sat there in the terminal was on their phones calling the airline asking what alternatives we had. I was. I was calling the airline to ask, what alternatives do I have? Because this flight was supposed to be arriving at 11 o'clock at night. I want to get home. And I know that that flight coming out of Seattle is going to be the last flight. It's a short flight. It's only 50 minutes. The last flight coming home. And the thought occurred to me, if I do not make that flight, what am I going to do in the SeaTac airport at midnight? Now, some of you brethren did come on my mind to give you a call if I needed a, a place to stay that night. When I get there, there were, there's a wing of these little puddle jumpers there, and in that wing, there was a fair amount of flights that were getting canceled. Fortunately, my flight, I couldn't believe how busy this was at 11.30 at night, my flight, I was able to catch home. And you know, that reminds me of something that every you and everybody in this room right here is on a flight. Every one of us is on a pathway. And we have been reading in Hebrews, in fact, there's a, the analogy of a race. If you went on another chapter or so, there is an analogy of a race. Everyone in this room is in a race or in a pathway. There is a difference, though. We also were referred to in this last couple, um, uh, yesterday I believe it was, of 1 Corinthians 10, where in that chapter, the very first part of the chapter, talking about Israel, there is an all and there's a some, S-O-M-E. An all, A-L-L, -L, and there's a some, S-O-M-E. Now I can say of a surety that in this room, the all says all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. That is a certainty that all have sinned, and we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But the reason why I'm here for a few minutes is because there is a fear that there is a sum in here. There is an uncertainty that not everyone is on this pathway we have been speaking of with a Savior. You are walking a pathway if you're in this room and haven't taken the Savior. No doubt that pathway may be fine. 